obviously very proud. Coming to Central Michigan, tough place to play. They had a great crowd. Uh, they're definitely gunning for us. Uh, their coaching staff does a phenomenal job, uh, both sides of the ball. They do a lot of tough things on offense. Greg Colby on defense does a lot of really good stuff, and, and it's very, very taxing. Our guys had a really good plan on both sides of the ball, but they still stressed us. Uh, obviously, executing on offense early and getting the lead was huge. And, and then they, we knew they play a lot of man coverage, so we got some opportunities to push the ball down to James and, and, and Luke. And then Sam had a big play too. Uh, and then you know Kenny run, Kenny Young breaks open a big run. So first half was just really good, really good offense by us against a lot of different looks for Central's defense. Um, and got some big plays, which makes a huge difference. Defense, obviously, too many penalties in the first half. You know, uh, you know, they made plays to get 14, but we also kept drives alive when we had chances to be off the field with with penalties. So we got to continue to do a better job to play smart. Our kids play so stinking hard. I couldn't be any more proud of how hard they play really for the last two years now. Smart, we got some really smart kids. We got some kids that got to learn how to play football the right way all the time. And we still don't do that. So, and then obviously defense settled in, no penalties in the second half and had some big stops. And, you know, Sam Conley, obviously hero today, no junior McMullen. Sam hasn't played five downs in three years and plays a whole football game on the road against a really sophisticated offense. Merrimy comes in, Tony gets a targeting foul. We can't, you know, just nonstop. Our team just doesn't blink. It just, there's nothing more just bad stuff happens our kids just and then Merrimy reads his key and gets it they try to do the tight end throwback which typically when teams run it, it's wide open <laughs> typically and Merrimy actually saw the guy block and stayed with him didn't take his eyes off very similar play that since he scored on the two-point play last week that we took our eyes off and they got a wide open one on a guy coming back and that's a, that's his biggest play as there is in the game when Central has a chance to get it to really close at that point and then then we go down and kick the field goal and and put them in a tough situation so uh Obviously, tons of guys. Palmer stepping up. Kenny Young, you know, losing a relative, basically a brother, 24 hours before Cincinnati plays his tail off at Cincinnati. Goes home the last two days. We haven't seen him since Wednesday. He left practice in the middle of Wednesday to fly home, and, and, and bury basically his brother with his family. Comes back. He's a complete mess last night, and he comes and plays his tail off for his teammates. So, and the list goes on and on on special teams. And so many kids stepped up because we're a very beat up football team. So very, very proud of the whole organization today. Coach mentioned penalties. I can think of uh, two big uh, first half penalties, uh, the interception uh, that they took away and also the, the uh, run back of that, yeah. uh, of that had, uh, field goal. It could have been 21-21 yeah, at the half. They, they had one, obviously, uh, a couple, two on their side, which I'm sure they're talking about and going to get corrected next week just like we're trying. They got kids that play super hard too, but over overzealous coming over the top on the field goal and, and then a late hit on the quarterback on there. So it was probably pretty even the first half of both teams probably doing some overzealous things and really hurting themselves after, after big plays. Even looking at the schedule uh, before this season, you could look at it and say this had the makings of a trap game after Cincinnati and before yeah. Notre Dame, but the they seemed to came, handle it. When the schedule came out, I didn't like it. I didn't, and that, that this is the max and most important thing. And I know our rivalry with Cincinnati. Trust me, the, the, the feeling's never going to go away from that game. This win doesn't take that away. Trust me. But we're in the MAC conference, and we want to try to win as many MAC conference games. And having having your rival the week before, and having Notre Dame the week after, and you're on the road at a really tough place. They don't lose a lot of games up here, and for years and years, it's it's one of the storied or the storied team in our league. With Tarbell, we think we got a great tradition. Central Michigan's got a crazy great tradition, and they got tons of pride, and they play the game the right way. And they they you know I'm not complaining about my injuries, but we had, they had some key guys out too on offense. They have some of their big horses out too, so uh, very similar. But I'm proud of the guys that stepped up for me, and I'm sure Coach Montemagas is proud of the guys that. Stepped up and played played well for his guys. So, but not not a great place to put Central Michigan on schedule. Very proud of getting to one and on the league's huge, and winning on the road. We only got three more road games. Tough to win road MAC games. So. How to feel to have Coach, Central Michigan injuries mostly concentrated on the outside. Did that allow you to kind of tailor your defensive game plan to really stopping the run and stopping Jonathan yeah, Ward? Yeah, and, 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 and it makes a difference. They had some they got some young receivers that are pretty good players, but they're certainly not the Conklin, the guys that are out that are that are top end Mac guys and even even above. So it, it certainly makes a difference. And I'm sure they were looking at some of the guys we had out and said, OK, Sam Conley's a good player, but he's not a Junior McMullen, you know, and and no Maurice Thomas, who's our most dynamic big play guy. So I'm sure there was things they looked at like, OK, 31's not going to be out there. We can do some things. We don't have to worry about him trying to run by or jet sweep. So but they, they've you know, so they, they've got some really good players out, too. Their quarterback, uh, he's got a really quick release and uh, he's able to extend plays. Uh, you knew that coming in, but it looked like they, overall that they did a pretty good job of it. Yeah, we contained them pretty good. 
and they misfired on a couple a couple times. Guys were open, they misfired. So, uh, but he, he's a talented kid. I, I was trying to recruit him this sophomore year in high school before he committed to Michigan. So I've known him. I've known Shane for a long time, and he's a crazy talented kid and very competitive kid. So I thought our defense did a good job containing him. We talked about make him drive the ball, make him drive the ball, make him drive the ball. Particularly with all the young perimeter guys, make the young perimeter guys make a bunch of plays. Don't let don't let them make one play. Sorry about that. So just because you got an inexperience outside, you want to make them drive, and maybe somebody will drop one, and that happened a couple times today. You really gashed our defense, especially on first down. Was that something that you saw from a, an, uh, a mismatch standpoint, or did you say, hey, offensive line, go get it? No, we just we weren't super happy with how we ran it last week, you know, and I think I think Central played a little bit more pass defense and, and gave us a better run looks, you know, and we got some big guys outside that makes plays with Gardner and Murphy and those guys, but, um, but I think we played better up front. I, I think, you know, I think 45s, he's as good at his position as anybody in our league is at their position. He is, we did so much today to try to get help and not, yeah, I don't know that we left him one-on-one -on -one all the day in pass rush. We were fanning a guard to him almost. I mean, just, he's so good. I mean, so we are definitely trying to make, because he, he's, he's fun to watch unless you're playing him. He's one of my favorite. And then same thing with uh, what's the name of the corner that wore 45. I'm terrible with people's names, but yeah, Coleman, such a dynamic playmaker. He had the return and he had both of his big plays. They were called back on penalties, but we tried to we tried to put him in position that we could use our height on him and not anything underneath. He just God, he's so good at finding finding ways. There's and there's no way to tell where he's at. He's just a playmaker. Show the one handed backhand. That was a ridiculous play. Like I told him about the game. Like I'm so glad you're gone. But we were trying to push it vertically to limit his ability to undercut things and make plays. We try to fake bubbles and throw it over the top because we know he's so good. <laughs> so just we try to really game plan two really dynamic players that they have that make tons of plays. How did it feel to have Alonzo and, and Gardner back? Did that help you as far as your scheming? And, yeah, it was good. So it was good. I don't think so. It was 100 percent. But he's another one. Got he didn't practice much. I mean, he practiced a little bit on Thursday. Didn't practice, but he. Again, if we had our full complement of backs, you probably wouldn't have seen a lot of Zoe. But without Leonard and without Mo, it was kind of like he's looking at two freshmen and I got to go. Miles Reed shouldn't have probably even been out there today. I shouldn't say, I mean, he was capable of going our docks one. But if we were not so beat up at linebacker, Miles Reed probably played 20 snaps and he, he's really, really a beat up football player and he really got it out too.